Hi, I'm Curtis Bodie, and welcome to The Scope of Science. I was recently trying to do some baking with my family back in Ontario, and we couldn't for the life of us figure out how many tablespoons were in the th a third of a cup. And we're pretty educated, pretty intelligent people that at one point learned to use the imperial system, but we couldn't figure it out because it's 5.33 tablespoons. And, well, you can't measure a third of a tablespoon. We were trying to use tablespoons so you didn't have to measure a third of a cup. And it turns out that you're supposed to use five tablespoons and one teaspoon. Which is a lot like saying if you wanted to know the volume of a watermelon, that's the same as five apples and an orange which makes no sense at all, but this is how the imperial system works. My height, for example, is five feet and nine inches, which is kind of crazy, but this is the imperial system. For example, in measurement of length, 20 twips is one point, and six points is a line, 12 lines is an inch, and 12 inches is obviously a foot, and three feet make up one yard, and 1,760 yards make up a mile, which is absolutely different than a nautical mile or a Roman mile. And if your head is spinning, so is mine, and that's just a tiny sliver of distance measurement in Imperial, why don't we use metric? Well, in metric, all you have to do to do a conversion is move the decimal place. So say you want to take a unit like a meter or a liter, and transfer that into a kilometer or a kiloliter. You have to move the decimal place one, two, three times, and that's all. You're done. Conversion made simple. And the crazy thing about Imperial is that it is actually based on the metric system. It's defined by the metric system. So if you want to know how long a yard is, by definition, it is 0 0.9144 meters. And it didn't always used to be this way, but this is now the case for the entire imperial system. Now compare that to what the metric system is based on. It's based on logical science. So for example, a meter in metric, it is defined by how far light can travel in 3.34 nanoseconds, roughly. Now that's something that will never change because the speed of light is always constant. And in fact, all of the entire metric system is based this way. It's based on fundamental laws of the universe, whether it's for time or for distance. Now, that's something that won't change, unlike, say, I don't know, the length of a king's foot. It's a little more obvious. Now, what does this map show? Well, it has Liberia, Myanmar, and the USA. These are the three countries in the world, the only three that still use the imperial system. And even America tried to switch to the metric system in 1975 with the Metric Conversion Act, but it failed, which is a real shame because of things like this. This is the Mars Climate Orbiter, and in uh, 1998, it cost $193 million and it crashed into Mars because someone didn't do the conversion correctly between metric and imperial. And of course, we use metric in science, so this shouldn't happen. <laughs> Even worse, a plane crashed because uh, someone didn't put enough fuel in it because they thought that imperial and metric didn't, you didn't need to worry about the conversions on that. And uh, yeah. People could have died, but Air Canada still hasn't quite figured out that they shouldn't use the Imperial system because on Air Canada flights, if you look at how far you have to go before you get to your destination on that little monitor, they still use miles and only miles, which is infuriating to me. <laughs> now, I'm not just upset about the Imperial system because it costs a lot, though it does cost a lot. No one knows exactly, but it costs at least a few hundred million dollars a year. To, between all of the faulty conversions, the mistakes, and just the fact that in order to use it, we still have to have everything listed in metric and everything listed in imperial, and that's expensive. I'm not upset about the price though. I'm upset about how it affects science. Now, if you are trying to do a science experiment, you have to do measurements. Science comes down to measuring the world and checking your assumptions or testing what your opinions are, your hypothesis is. So if you can't do a measurement, and you can't do it accurately, if you don't know what a meter is, then how are you supposed to do science? It's a pretty big problem. 
And if you agree and you like this video, please like this video. And if you didn't like this video, please dislike this video and give me some feedback. I'd love to hear from you. And you can click here to subscribe if you like, and thank you for watching.